Welcome to the Star of Grind. How do you think having a family changes entrepreneurs? How does it change anyone? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's another responsibility. And it's a major responsibility. And it's, it's in my own belief, uh, getting married and having kids is the best thing I've ever done in my life. But if you're a founder? But if you're a Can founder, you... you have to understand what's important to you and when. Uh, I think the hardest part about it is figuring out where and how to allocate your time. Um, certainly before I had kids, I had an intellectual idea of what it was going to be like, but not until I got there. I, I think the hardest thing is how to satisfy your own responsibilities towards the company, towards your family, and towards yourself, while also staying sane. I think it's incredibly difficult. I've seen very few people do it successfully. And where does that rank in, um, in having fun in the valley? Where would you rank your family? Where would you rank your family? Career, family, startups. Where would I? Yeah. Well, for me, it's uh, my number one thing that I focus on more than making any amount of money or anything else. I mean, the true measure of success is whether you have happy kids um, that are well adjusted and can be good people. That's what I think. Uh, that's the kind of family my wife and I both came from. Um, thanks. thanks. Yeah. Well, though, though, I will tell you that. Uh, um, it's, it's very funny that in Silicon Valley, and I've been doing the survey with my students now for the last 10 years, a disproportionate number of founders come from dysfunctional families. Yes, it's very true. Uh, and, and for those of you sitting it's in the room true. looking at each other, making sure that no, one, no one's figuring it out, um, it, the survivors of dysfunctional families have a, have a um, for the first time in their lives, a success factor in this valley that they've never had, and that is yeah. the ability to operate in chaos uh, while everybody else is melting down. Uh, they're going, really? Somebody quit? We're screaming at each other? Normal day at home. Um, <laughs> and no one died. You know, pretty good day. Um, yeah. And, and with the only uh, bad news about that is that CEOs who come from dysfunctional families do great until you find a repeatable and scalable business model. And then when you need to execute on a regular basis and do the same thing every day, you'll find those same CEOs throwing hand grenades into their own company to keep so chaos bored. going they're bored. on. They're bored. And, the, and bored and everything else. Uh, so for those of you who are recognizing either you're working for one of those people or you are one of those people, pay attention here. It's actually good to a point and then bad later on. And then um, after you make all the money, that's when you hire enough shrinks to repair the rest <laughs> of your life. Um, and by the way, the reason why I personally know this is one of my mentors was a, one of the first uh, women VCs, Catherine Gould. Um, and I had thought I had recognized this pattern. And I went to Catherine and I said, Catherine, did you ever notice that, you know, the great CEOs, dysfunctional families? And she looked at me like it was the stupidest thing I'd ever said because she's, the next words were, Steve, why do you think we invested in you? <laughs> she said, all my CEOs. She said, I invest in those as a pattern, because you guys just overachieved. <laughs>